Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my adorable co-host Teddy, and today we're putting the Intel i3-8350K up against the i5-8400. So this one's quite interesting because you have the 8350K quad core but unlocked against the 8400 which is a 6 core but it is locked. So let's jump right in then and talk about these two CPUs. So as I just said the 8350K is a 4 core CPU non hyper threaded so only coming with 4 threads as well. It's coming in with a clock speed of 4 gigahertz and of course it is unlocked which means you can overclock it up to quite high as we will talk about a bit later. Now the i5-8400 is a 6 core 6 thread CPU, again no uh, hyper threading there. It's coming with a 2.8 gigahertz base clock, <laughs> which isn't particularly high. But the turbo clock is pretty decent, that's coming in at 4 gigahertz. And of course as I said before it is locked which means you cannot overclock the CPU. So let's talk about the uh, test rigs quickly. So I tested both these CPUs with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, which has been absolutely fantastic. It's a very, very good motherboard. Of course, to keep things fair, use the same G-Skill memory. Uh, it's a 16 gigabyte kit running at 2933 MHz for all the tests. The same GPU, the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti, and the same cooler, the Deepcool Gamex 120mm. RGB cooler, which also does a pretty good job. Now let's talk quickly about the overclocks and the temperatures. So of course you can't overclock the 8400, so not much to talk about there. Now you can overclock the 8350K, and the one I got, which was a retail sample by the way, did a very good job. Considering it's pretty much a 7600K, uh, I got 5 gigahertz out of it at 1.37 volts, which I think is really, really solid. And, you know, 5 gigahertz on any CPU is no joke, especially on a uh, modern one. I mean, maybe you might say the 9590 was a bit of a joke, but you got what I meant. So, yeah, um, very, very powerful there for the 8350K. Now, as far as the temperatures go, I ran them in IDA64, doing the CPU stress test for 5 minutes. And as you guys can see, the 8350K actually ran cooler when it was running at its stock frequencies, but of course once you overclock, add the extra voltage and stuff, that is going to rise. But I would say for the most part those temps are just fine, and this 120mm cooler I use is a pretty typical one that I think represents uh, your average air cooler on the market today. Now let's go into the benchmarks then, and see how these two CPUs perform. So this is the last time I'll be using this uh, benchmark suite in terms of uh, some of the games, I am in the process of refreshing it, so this will be the last one with this uh, setup, with these ones. But yeah, it's going to be quite interesting, quite a good mix in there, so let's jump in and see how these two CPUs perform.
we're back. So what do we make of the benchmarks then? So at the stock clock speeds, the 8400 does a much better job than the 8350K, pretty much winning across the board. But when you overclock the 8350K up to 5 GHz, it starts to get very, very close. And I would say it's pretty much a tie uh, if you went for the average scores between the two CPUs once the 8350K is overclocked. So I'd say it's really going to have to, uh, you're going to have to sort of like ask yourself if you're deciding out these two CPUs, is the application or a game I'm going to be playing one that relies more heavily on cores or is it one that relies more heavily on uh, clock speed? Because as you guys saw, the uh, single thread results for the 8350K, once it was overclocked to 5 GHz, are very high. 215 CB in Cinebench, that is no joke. And a lot of games really like high clock speed. So that is kind of one thing you might need to ask yourself. But yeah, very, very close uh, in terms of performance once the 8350K is overclocked. Which brings us nicely into the conclusion where we bring price into the equation. And this is where it gets really tricky deciding between these two CPUs. So right now at Playtech in New Zealand, you can pick up the i3 8350K for 295 New Zealand dollars. Now if you want to pick up the i5 8400, that's going to be 309 New Zealand dollars, but it also comes with a cooler. So that will be able to get you by for all your needs. Not only that, but right now you can only get Z370 motherboards. I don't know why Intel's done this, maybe just to boost sales or something like that. But you're going to have to wait till next year before you get things like the B360, I believe it'll be called, the cheaper Intel motherboards. Uh, this won't matter with the 8350K because you'll need to get a Z370, but this will bring the value for money for the 8400 up a bit because you won't necessarily need to buy a Z370 motherboard. That's going to be good in terms of value for money. Also remember that if there's certain motherboard features you're looking for or you're just wanting better motherboards, then you're probably going to gravitate towards the Z370s anyway. That's something a lot of people tend to forget. Uh, so with all of that in mind and the fact that you're going to have to buy a cooler for the 8350K, it is going to end up being more expensive even right now with the Z370s. But in the future, the 8400 will become a lot more viable. So I would say this, if you're not going to overclock at all, then buy the 8400. Even right now, with the only Z370 motherboards, I would go for the 8400. However, if you're an enthusiast and you're keen to overclock, then I would probably go with the 8350K. That thing at 5 GHz is no joke. It's a very, very powerful CPU. And that's the one I think the enthusiast would enjoy more. And personally, that's the one I would get if I was getting a Z370 motherboard. But all of this, as I said, will change in the future once those cheaper Intel boards come out. And that's just picking between these two CPUs. Once we open it up to all CPUs on the market, then it's quite hard still to recommend either of these CPUs over a Ryzen 1600 with a B350 motherboard. Because that's still a very, very potent combo when it comes to value for money. So that's how I'm gonna leave this one. But as always, I want it to be a discussion. What would you pick? The 8350K or the 8400? Given you know the situation right now with only Z370 motherboards, uh, you know, does that influence your decision? Or would you just not go for either of them and you would go for the Ryzen 1600 and a B350? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now I thank you all for watching this video, please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video and as always I'll see you guys next time.